Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first Bite Size of 2024. I hope all of you made it well into this new year. And as the first presenter this year, we have Maxime, and he's going to talk about how to use uh, Nextflow or Slurm as a Nextflow executor. So uh, it's up to you. Thank you very much. So hello, everyone. It's nice to be like invited today at uh, NGI like, to give this talk. So I'm Maxime Garcia. I used to work here, so I know the location pretty well. That was like kind of nice to, to be back. And I know work for Sekera, as like most of you know, I guess. And uh, so today I'm going to talk about like how to use like uh, Slurm within Nextflow. So, oh, sorry, where am I? Right? Yes. So yes, just a quick disclaimer at the beginning. It's my own limited usage. So I did use Slurm before when I was like sitting here because that was like uh, was the executor that was used on the, on the clusters that we were using. And uh, I did use some other executor before more or less, I guess, changing from one executor to another, it's not that complicated. You have like different options, but next row, take care of, of, uh, of that for you. So yes, as it says in the doc, like the executor provides an abstraction between the pipeline processes and the underlying execution system. So this allows you to write the pipeline functional logic independently from the actual processing for, uh, platform. So yes. Basically, it means that uh, that is what like make uh, Nextflow portable. So, oops, sorry, uh, switch over. So basically, the executor component make like Nextflow uh, portable, and it's really uh, allow you like to switch from one uh, platform to uh, to another. And by default, the executor will be local. So that's what we use when we run like most of our tests, on, or when I like develop a pipeline on my side on my computer. So for example, here I will be, so I will not be demoing anything uh, today uh, because I don't have access like to uh, OopMax cluster anymore. So I run that before uh, with like uh, fan assistance. So that was super nice of her to help me with that. And I like copy paste like everything that was there, just change a few paths like to not show the secret uh, underlying uh, in between the file and stuff. So, but more or less, this is what happened. So I will be running like a pipeline with Slurm, so on OopMax, so using the OopMax profile. So the config file is linked like in the in the presentation. I will share the presentation like uh, later. And basically the config is like pretty huge, but these like few lines are the ones that are like interested in, interesting like for me today. So first of all, we will be like setting up the singularity. It's enabled. So by default it's enabled. We don't have to specify singularity uh, in our profile. Uh, and then uh, for the pro for the process, we specify that we want the executor uh, to be slow. And then we specify some uh, cluster option, which I will get back to uh, later. So let's go. I just run, I just connect to Max. I'm on the head node and I just, uh, I load like the correct like module that I need to load like on Max to make it work. And then I just launch like uh, Nextflow run and of course RNA seek. That's Sarek, like I, I don't do everything with Sarek. I use other pipeline from time to time. Um, I specify the profile test because I just want like to test things out. I specify the profile of Max because obviously I'm an of Max. And then I specify the, the out there to be results. And this unfortunately is failing. I have a first failure, which is like uh, interesting. So usually what I do when I see such a, such a failure, I look at like, uh, the what is there like what are the warning what are the error and here i can see that it failed to submit process to grid scaler for execution so something is wrong with slurm like right away that's what i can see i can see that the command executed was sbatch dot command dot run so that's the command that uh, you were to execute if you want like to run a single process and then I can see the actual error was like bad job submission fail, invalid account or account partition uh, combination specified. So let's do a quick debug. So I'll have a look at my favorite like next generated file, which is like the dot command dot one. It's a huge file, it's super useful. And that's the first one that I look whenever I, I, I debug like a failed process. 
so the command dot run like is super huge, but when I run it with uh, Slurm as an executor, uh, Nextflow will add like a tiny bit of stuff like that is uh, that help uh, this file to be executed by sbatch. And in our case, we can see that this is all of the new specific stuff like uh, that are like specified uh, for Slurm uh, by Nextflow. And what interesting interests me here is that I can see that Slurm has a minus A uh, parameter option and that is here specified as null. So if you remember uh, my uh, config file parameter, we add like a cluster option. So this is like an option for Slurm and we have like these parameters uh, param project. So basically what I can do if I look back at the command one, I can see that here the minus a is null. So basically what I can do, I can like specify a project ID within like the pipeline, and then it will be uh, back in the config file, uh, back in the s bash like file with the proper minus a parameter. So if I do that, then it works, and if I go inspect like a dot command dot run, which you can do also like for uh, just because it's an interesting file, and then you can have a look and like this process has failed in my case because I did like some other crazy stuff, obviously. But in this case, it 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 will work, and here you will see like your real like secret ID, and this cluster option will help you like uh, specify any other particularities that you will need like for your own uh, cluster. Uh, you can specify also the memory and, uh, and the time and like any uh, requirement that you need, CPU as well. So all of that, that all of the specifics that are really needed for uh, for Slurm is populated by Nextflow, and you don't have to take care of that. And for me, that's the whole beauty of Nextflow. Nextflow uh, take care of all that for you, and you don't have like to uh, to think about it. Uh, yes, yeah, so basically for me, that was more or less all because I think that's uh, more something that you, if you have like an issue on Slurm, I would recommend like really, so that's the one link to Slack, sorry. I wanted like, I just copy paste that, that like from the pipeline, from the previous byte size and that was a, the wrong link. So sorry about that. But yes, basically I will, if you have like a specific problem, problem like with Slurm or with any other executor, I will first suggest like to go to your uh, local uh, admin or IT, talk with them. If there, if there is something that they can help you about, like they will help, help you with that. Otherwise I will recommend like uh, just go on Slack. We have like uh, no stupid question. We have like, uh, channels uh, dedicated for that. And definitely there are like a way you can deal with that. So now I guess we can go with the question. So I'm like, I'm do, <laughs> or you want to say that for me? Or it, doesn't, say it? it doesn't matter. So okay. we already have um, a question, I guess. Uh, is there any way to avoid adding the dash dash mem option in the dot command dot run? Okay, in my cluster, it's not good practice to use either these numeric regression date manual as a partition on that you ask for. Uh, I will say that yes, I think. I, oh, yes, Phil, answer it. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in, Maxim. Oh, no, 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 no worries. Like, uh, the more, the, the better. The merrier. Um, so, generally, we, we set it by default um, in NF core pipelines, so it's quite difficult to get rid of. Um, many, mo many, if not most clusters require you to specify a memory requirement, but in some cases, um, it's the other way around and, and either clusters, uh, administrators say don't set it because it's set automatically by the number of CPUs. Uh, and in a couple of rare cases, we've had it where clusters will reject the job if any memory is specified. In those cases, it is possible to overwrite with a custom config to say, you basically set the memory process memory to null and then, um, and then it won't set the memory in the sbatch command run file at all. And uh, there's an example in NF core configs, I mean, shared institutional configs for the heavy cluster in Gothenburg. Um, I set up, I think that was the first one I did that for. So that's one I usually point to. Um, I'll share the link in the Zoom chat. Oh, thank that you. This is a question. Okay, second question. On Tower, so the platform, after a successful run, we have an optimization button. 
But what about on prem slurm? Uh, Phil, sorry again. <laughs> Can you help me on that? I don't remember what uh, what we where we are on on, on the on that side. So the optimization works for uh, runs which are done through Tower or through Secure Platform, as it's now called. Um, and you can run pipelines on Slurm through Secure Platform. So if you run via Secure Platform, it, you should be able to optimize as far as I remember. I don't think it's cloud only at this point. Um, I might be wrong about that, but obviously if you run Nextflow by itself, it's an Nextflow, it's a Nextflow Tower Secure Platform feature. So it only works if you're using Secure Platform. Yeah, but I guess if you use uh, Next uh, uh, Secure Platform, you can get the, the optimized um, input from there, right? Yes. So that should that should work. But then you would yes. have to specify it yourself. Exactly. At the moment, it, it gives you a config which you can copy and paste into a file, so you, you only need to run it once, and then you can save that somewhere. Okay. Uh, people can also um, unmute themselves and ask the questions in person if they want to. Uh, <laughs> but we do have an okay we have like two more questions so first it was like uh, oh oh samuel hello again uh you mentioned that uh, yes a useful tip would go like to check about like debugging the run folder in general and he shared the link like towards the uh, training dot uh, dot io and there is like a debugging page like in the basic training which is like super useful i really recommend like reading that like uh, when you need like to debug and yes usually that's more or less like what i follow uh, when i need to debug a pipeline and uh, phil has already answered the question like from uh, june Labs. so that was what i was about to say so the, the agent was developed exactly for this use case, and uh, uh, he linked like uh, the docs for that as well. It's on just the to reiterate the question in case anyone's watching on on YouTube afterwards, where you can't see the comments. It's about using Secure Platform um, to launch jobs on HPC, where your HPC has two factor authentication. So Secure Platform can can authenticate either using SSH, just you give it an SSH key and it just logs in as you would do normally. Or if that doesn't work because you have two factor or something like that, then um, then you can use Tower Agent, which is basically a daemon which you set up yourself on your cluster, which sits there running, and that reaches out to Secure Platform rather than the other way around. And we we they use that like here at NGI like for uh, in a secure cluster setting, so that works well. Uh, do we have any more questions from the audience? I see nothing else in the chat. Um, yeah, well, then I would like to thank you, Maxime, for um, giving this interesting talk. And uh, as usual, I would also like to thank the Jan Zuckerberg Initiative for funding our bite sized talks and um, you all for listening. And I hope you all be back. Bye bye. See you soon.